how do you perceive that reality sir that uh, you know that's how at that point pan india so yeah, called pan india got to actually, know you actually actually no it was it was it was see it's in your life especially for actors nothing matters more than recognition you know so for me it started in, in my third standard i played this little afro american girl without any dialogues i just stood on stage i was stupefied and i saw these 20 30 kids were sitting there and i felt that magic and from there it started and i was doing sentry or some watchman or you know i mean like a soldier without any dialogues and that itself was so gratifying for me from there i started saying one line dialogues then five lines then the audience became 50 then the next girl uh, the whole school 500 then the girls school so thousands so you're looking for a wider audience and finally got into cinema and you know you start it's just summer and there is telugu and and then suddenly you realize like somebody in bombay like i was very popular in the south nobody knew me in bombay and then i was going with this friend we were shopping something and then one guy looked at me and i said i think he's recognized me she said hey come on yeah you're vikram i said yeah but nobody knows me here and then he he came up to me and he said are you that guy and i was like wow <laughs> one guy recognized me in bombay you know it was mumbai i mean that time it was bombay and uh, that was so exciting because somebody in bombay actually recognized me then later of course in france someone recognized me and someone in you know norway recognized me i mean they, they were still tamil but you know for the uh, for an actor it's the wider audience and you know so aparijit did that to me like uh, pitamagan was south india but aparijit was what put me on the map indian map you know people actually and and it was i think the need of the hour not just the movie people identified with that character and what he stood for and i always thank mr shankar for that for doing that because i think that's one of the most beautiful things that happened to me there's so many tangents in my head sir right now <laughs> <laughs> there's a part of me that just wants to have a human conversation with you because there's so many human traits about you that i admire i have sure. to study very deeply for each episode okay. and i knew a lot about you but my research revealed even more layers because okay. it's not as simple as just absorbing research and then creating questions from it yeah. we watch a lot of past videos we try reading between the lines so yeah. i have a whole human set of I questions yeah, that sure. i have to ask for you go for it but first we have to talk about aparijit of course <laughs> let's thrash it out uh you're someone who's a 100 percenter so i have a very dear friend zakir khan he's told me that in media you'll always find two kinds of professionals One's a hundred percent, or who'll give a hundred percent to everything that they do. Yeah. Be it a podcast, be yeah. it the yeah. smallest film role, be it the biggest film role. Yeah. It's the same yeah. amount of intensity. Wow. And then there's people who are just not hundred percenters. Yeah. They may be a ninety percenter. You are totally in that hundred percenter yeah. club. I'm a little mad that way in the sense. Um, sometimes there'll be this interview which I'm trying to avoid, and I, I don't really give interviews. And then I'll say, okay, but then I'm sorry, I can only give you 15 minutes. Then I'll go sit there, and I realize that I'm not doing justice. So I'll start doing half an hour. Then it'll be three hours. After a point, like I'll be in it, three hours, three and a half hours. We'll be talking because I feel, you know, you have to do it right. <laughs> and when my manager will say, "Anna, three hours," I just <laughs> say, "Hey, wait, 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 we're still talking, right?" <laughs> you know, it's like that. It's anything, even if I my daughter's school, if there's a project. it has to be that way i'll have to like help her and make have a river and then have sprout something sprout and then you'll have a rice field and then you have a thatch roof and it has to be that good like why sir i've always been like that from when i was a child not i don't know if i'm a perfectionist or it's just that i'm obsessed with even the little nitty gritties and it has to be perfect anything like if it's my dog i have to brush it right like if i'm sweep i'll actually go to the maid and take the broom and say let's do it this way this is not the way you do it everything has to be it's not like it's not i wouldn't say ocd but it's just that there is a way to do it and there's no there's another way to do it like driving like my daughter will drive proper swimming it's the right stroke like for me it's you have to do it this way that's the best way to do it you know how are you as a student student i was a dreamer i was terrible like um, ba- back bencher no yeah i was my the f- like first bencher always till my 8th where i used to be the first five ranks and then i discovered cinema and i wanted to act <laughs> and i became the last five ranks i never came beyond that and i never studied in my life i mean it's a very bad example i shouldn't say this but i've never studied because i was always dreaming and i did science and math and i got first class i was the last in my class but i got first class because i just i used to talk i used to bullshit like i i'll, I'll have general knowledge and I actually got first class and people were surprised i got first class i was the last in my class though and then i did literature and stuff and I mean, this is history. I'm glad that I didn't. My parents wanted me to become a doctor. Marks weren't enough. Then maybe a dentist. Thank God I didn't have enough marks. <laughs> I'd be there in a clinic somewhere instead of following my dream. 
Yeah, even medical professionals are being celebrated on podcasts nowadays. Of course, yeah, as they should. Yeah, but that wouldn't have been my dream. It would have been my parents' dream, right? They wanted me to be an IAS officer or to be a doctor. For me, I've always wanted to be an actor. But they didn't want you to be a part of cinema. No, the irony is my dad ran away. My dad is from Paramakudi, which is Kamal Kamal Hasan's uh, hometown, uh, and he his father was a headmaster, but he ran away from home to act, and he was a very bad actor. I'm sorry, dad. I mean, if he's listening <laughs> he was he couldn't act to save his life but he was so obsessed with it so i think it's just genetic loading and i became like that my son became like that but from that time i've been wanting to act like i've always wanted to act so you so, you spoke about eighth standard yeah, right yeah uh could you name a set of films from that period of your life pre teens teenage i would all of kamal sir's movies at that time okay. like 8th 9th and 10th it was all we didn't have the opportunity to watch hindi films maybe the only hindi films i had watched is something which like was a huge like shole was a big hit so i saw shole uh, we, we, we'll just have one of some of these rare hindi films which come down south we didn't have the net of course so we couldn't surf anything but i had watched all of kamal sir's movies and i tried to fashion myself according to him you know so that time it was varumi niram so then sadma which was another thing it came much later not it is a little later than padinar uh, vaidnale which is a beautiful film most of my films were fa- you know like uh, his films rajni sir i discovered much later and like i suddenly discovered style and what he does but kamal sir was it and as a child i hope i'm not digressing no, no. what happened is i was always fascinated with acting but i came across this little booklet wherein there was a schoolmaster who was doing different like he left pictures of himself as a postman as a beggar as a communist as a watchman uh, as a magician and it was all with just basic makeup but he used to look very different in every picture it was about 100 pages and that kind of and already i have sivaji sir who you could see one picture and you'll know which movie it, it is from he mm. and he's a very he comes from a very dramatic style of acting so he could do all that but you would know if you see a still you'll know so that kind of you know struck a deep chord and i re- realized that when i become an actor every film of mine i should be different but not just in the pictures i should walk different i should talk different i should laugh different i should eat different i should fight different so i've tried to do that and it's not just films like seedu or pitamagan or whatever even my uh, most commercial films like kandasami dil dul they're all it could be i could just be vikram the star but what i did is i'll try to show something very different like the way they fight the way he like dil will be a guy who wants to be a cop so his actions will be very sharp and he's very fit and very light he's like but sami i was already a cop so he will not fight the regular way it's even a slap will be you know cops mm. they don't punch it's more like slaps and because they hit from a position of authority so they're not scared you know unless they are crowded i mean surrounded by hoodlums and they're going to be killed or something but otherwise that uh, and aprajit was somebody who's like very powerful so every film i'll try to do that you know it's just for even the dance Like I don't know if you've seen Tangalan. There's a song where I will dance like somebody who doesn't know how to dance. I've tried to do that, which is very interesting for me as an actor. So I try to. Th- that's what they say about great acting. That happens through the body language as oh, well. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. But <laughs> legendary acting happens through the soul. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. I uh, I hope I reach that one day. I think you've so, already I'm, touched I'm, that I'm mark. So almost, let me let me. Okay. I'm to. <laughs> you have some more room to go, sir. Yeah. <laughs> there's always room for improvement, and I always feel. acting like in most crafts especially acting you can never have learnt everything you're never that like for instance like there was that period when sivaji sir used to act when everything was dramatic i told you if he's a coward he's a coward if he's brave he's like that way and you know it's all drama it's they come from that school then we had this thing where it was like normal acting but little dramatic now like like about 3 years back the director just told me don't act just be every expression is the same happiness sadness you're cry- unless you're crying just just be deadpan so that's a trend so it keeps shifting you know it keeps changing and you can never learn everything in cinema but it's so nice i mean technology has brought in so many new things and you adapt you learn you pick up stuff hey if you enjoyed today's clip make sure you check out all the other clips we've uploaded on this channel you'll find a clip related to almost every single topic as long as you're willing to search for it